Hello, I'm John Hocking, the Registrar of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the work of this tribunal and share with you some of our achievements. In the spring and summer of 2011, we announced the arrests of Bosnian Serb Ratko Mladic and Croatian Serb Goran Hadžić. The last fugitives sought by the ICTY were finally in our custody. These arrests put an end to the multinational manhunt for the last of 161 individuals wanted on war crimes charges. This is the largest number of people ever to be prosecuted for war crimes by a single international institution. It also marked a milestone for the world's first truly international court. 18 years after its establishment, the ICTY can proudly say that no person indicted by it can evade justice. As the wars raged in Croatia and in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the early 1990s, reports of atrocities committed on a mass scale came to light. Serious violations of international humanitarian law were being committed. As the world watched daily news reports detailing mass executions, torture, rape and deportation, it became clear that these were not isolated incidents. These appalling crimes were part of an organised, systematic campaign of violence amounting to crimes against humanity and genocide. It was not just soldiers who experienced the terror and suffering of war. Many thousands of civilians, women, children, the elderly and civilian men became casualties in this tragic and bloody conflict. An estimated 140,000 people lost their lives. Millions more were driven from their homes. Massive economic disruption meant much of the former country was left in poverty. Political instability prolonged an atmosphere of fear and misery. The international community was compelled to intervene and ensure that these disturbing crimes did not go unpunished. On 25th May 1993, the United Nations Security Council voted unanimously to establish the ICTY to try those believed responsible for grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, violations of the laws or customs of war, crimes against humanity, and genocide. This will be no victor's tribunal. The only victor that will prevail in this endeavor is the truth. Nearly 20 years later, this tribunal has irreversibly changed the landscape of international humanitarian and criminal law. We've dismantled the impunity of heads of state military and political leadership for war crimes. Finally, rank and position could not serve as an excuse for evading responsibility for the crimes that happened. We've also brought many criminals to justice as evidenced by the guilty verdicts handed down in the Kerstich case regarding the massacre at Srebrenica. Bosnian women, children and elderly were removed from the enclave and between seven to 8,000 Bosnian Muslim men were systematically murdered. Sentences, Radislav Kerstic, to 35 years imprisonment. We've given voice to over 4,000 witnesses through their testimonies. But to kill the wounded that cannot defend themselves, who have no arms, it is terrible. It is a crime that has to be punished. Tens of thousands of hours of video recordings and millions of pages of documents from our courtrooms provide an undeniable and positive legacy for generations of students, scholars and ordinary citizens to come. Furthermore, factual findings of our trial chambers will contribute to the making of a historical record about the events that irrevocably changed the region. Our primary function is trying individuals for war crimes. The ICTY has also served as an incentive to authorities in the former Yugoslavia to reform their judiciaries. It's been a catalyst for the creation of specialised war crimes courts. These and other courts across the region have and will continue to benefit from the tribunal's experience and legal expertise. We're actively working in partnership with legal professionals from the former Yugoslavia. We're assisting them in dealing with war crimes cases and enforcing legal standards in their local systems. 
The tribunals also transferred several cases and numerous investigative files to national authorities and courts, particularly in Bosnia-Herzegovina, but also in Croatia and Serbia. The ICTYs made an invaluable contribution to international jurisprudence. The tribunal's judges and staff have extensively shared their expertise with those involved with developing other international courts. The International Criminal Court, the Special Tribunal for Lebanon and the Special Court for Sierra Leone have benefited from our efforts. We've proved to the world that justice can work. This tribunal has been a pioneering institution setting a large number of important legal precedents. The ICTY has enforced a general prohibition of torture in international law. We've made significant advances in international humanitarian law pertaining to the legal treatment and punishment of sexual violence in wartime. The tribunal has specified crucial elements of the crime of genocide, in particular the definition of the target of this crime. Part of our mandate has been to contribute to a lasting peace in the region and through the ICTY's outreach program we are actively making our trials and judgments accessible and understandable to audiences in the territory of the former Yugoslavia. To conclude, this tribunal has given notice to would-be perpetrators of crimes against humanity, be they foot soldiers or heads of state, that these crimes will not be tolerated and that they could find themselves in front of an international criminal court to be held accountable for their actions. From our first pioneering steps to the day that this tribunal closes its doors, the work of its dedicated professionals will resonate in courtrooms, classrooms and war rooms. Thousands of trials will be heard by domestic courts carrying on the work of the ICTY long after its last judgment has been rendered. Bringing war criminals to justice was our mandate. The triumph of justice is our legacy.